Hi friends, it's Aubrey from Crybaby Seminole Homestead. Today I'm going to do a Mod Podge collage of projects around the backyard homestead and there will be a lot to glean. No one thing in particular, I'm going to be planting some fava beans, transplanting a miniature rose plant, um, repurposing some plastic containers, and a variety of other things. Let's get to it. I love these Dollar Tree containers. This one is from last year. I'm going to go ahead and rinse it off and this will be for my rose plant. If you've ever struggled with keeping these small rose plants alive, maybe it's because you're trying to keep them inside. They really prefer to be outside and they don't mind the cold. This has been outside since I purchased it back in February. I guess while I'm down here getting soil, I should do some weeding. Not a big deal. When you have little containers with your soil, you're going to get weeds. Anywhere the soil is disturbed, that's where they're going to pop up. If you notice here, I'm leaving the dandelion alone. I love them. All right, let's go ahead and fill in the bottom. This is dry, which is a shame because there would be so much more life in it if I had kept it watered. But it will be revitalized. So you want to kind of place it in so it's going to be able to be at the same level. That looks about right. This is kind of common sense, but there might be some new people on here. Just kind of wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. All right. So I talked to you guys the other day about nursery tricks. This is four plants. I'm going to divide it. See, there's one, two, three, four. This will just be one in here look we have a little friend and when I'm dividing them I'm just gonna wiggle gently to separate them so that I don't damage the roots hello wormy so this is one plant the other three are off to the side try to spread the roots out as much as you can okay that one looks good I'm gonna go ahead and water this one in and this is gonna perk out like really bush out eventually what they try to do is they try to make it looks like you have one really healthy plant when in reality you have actually four really young plants. That's their trick. It's an optical illusion, but it kind of works out for you if you are a gardener and you like to get four plants for the price of one. I don't mind. Let's give her a drink. And now I need to go find some more containers for the other three. Okay. So luckily I have four of these from the in the front yard from last year. I had petunias growing in here. I have my husband got them for free somewhere. Um, and those were annual. They're not growing back. And um, be careful when you're reusing your soil because a lot of plants that they say um, are annual or perennial like primroses. Um, the ones we have in the front are actually coming back up again. So that saves you money and I don't want to throw away something that's alive. So that will go on the compost. Got a little bit of weeding to do in these little containers. I'll do that really fast. And I don't know what these are. I don't remember. So I'm going to plant them in one of the containers because I only need three more and I have four. So I'm going to save these off to the side. I'm going to go ahead and plant those right here. That side goes down, obviously roots go down, point tip tight side goes up. And I'm going to mark this. So I wrote mystery bulbs because I don't remember what those two things were. We'll put this off to the side so it doesn't get reused on accident. I'm going to dump these out to make room. Ooh, look at that. Look at our little friend. And we'll go over here where you're safe. There you go. These containers make really good watering cans, so I'm going to go ahead and cut off the label and rinse it out really good. The other day I went to Ross and I found this container, which I'm going to use for some of my supplies. It's not all organized and decked out yet, but I have some of my materials in here. So I'm just trying to get a little bit more organized with these items. So I have some of my labels and markers and pruners. I've got my soldering iron, some skizzers, scissors, and I've got um, some little seed packets that I can use. 
So then I can just grab it and go. And that way I'm not grabbing just one random item at a time. And then hopefully I'll remember to put everything back where it goes. All right, so this is my little toolkit. And I'm gonna grab the scissors because I need to remove that label. So I snipped that off and now I have to rinse it out really good. So this is all filled up with rainwater and um, I'll just keep these out here. Now when I fill up the faucet, I like to leave it open so that it, the chemicals dissipate, but it's rainwater, so it's perfectly fine to use right away. And the other day I told you guys that these little sprouts that are weeds, those are actually lamb's quarters that are edible. Okay, small containers like this are good for when you have to reach up. So you have to carry, lift up a really heavy container. So I want to start some fava beans. Now is a good time to start them. You see this weed? It's called bindweed. It's related to morning glory and what i do with this is i put this on the top shelf of my greenhouse so it will fry and die see this is where they go to fry and die i got this shovel from the dollar tree i got these pots and trays from a seed swap for free and before i plant them i'm going to go ahead and water the soil because it's pretty dry ideally you don't want to let your soil dry out because it keeps it alive if you keep it well watered. But waste not, want not. And this little container is really easy to hold with one hand. It doesn't have a handle, but it doesn't really need one either. And I'm just gonna do one per pot. I don't want the roots to get disturbed when I am transplanting. This is what the dry fava beans look like when you're about to plant them. And this variety says that the flowers are purple and white. The types I've grown before have been black and white, which is very cool. So we'll see if this is really purple and white. When in doubt, plant sideways. Don't mind the background noise. The children in the neighborhood are playing. This is an urban homestead. So I marked this fava beans long pod, purple white flowers, Ed Hume seeds, on both sides in case it wipes off on one side and on here it says direct sowing but I'm not direct sowing because we have dogs and I haven't gated off the area yet so I'm gonna go ahead and so as you can see our bird feeders have run out I love this little pine cone bird feeders I'm gonna have to put some more peanut butter and bird seed on there but I got some of this suet I'm gonna go ahead and fill this up and the birds will be very happy the suet's full of fat and protein for the birds. Lots of fat and protein. If you look here, this half is broken, but these are like five or six bucks each, so I'm gonna keep it. When this other side breaks, I'll get rid of it, but this is good for the birds. This gives them some place to kind of stand, perch, whatever. Um, looks like it's mostly corn in there and some other seeds. And then I'm going to, later on, put some peanut butter make sure it does not have um, those fake sugars in the peanut butter otherwise the xylitol that's horrible it kills animals so make sure your peanut butter does not have xylitol um, but I'm gonna go ahead and put on some 
regular peanut butter on here with some bird seeds later and the birds are gonna be so happy and I just noticed that our cherry tree is starting to bud awesome about every third year our cherry tree gives us a lot of cherries and the hoarder in me is going to keep this tray I'm gonna rinse it out really well but these work really well underneath square shaped planters because you can put water in here it's just like a little tray and I think it's crazy that when you go to buy a tray it's like a dollar for one tray and this came free so I'm gonna rinse it out and this will go underneath a square shaped planter um, so that they don't dry out it'll be like a self-watering container all right everybody if you like birds in your garden attract them if you don't want birds in your garden because they will start eating some of your other things um, then I guess don't do this but I love wildlife and I love it when nature comes to visit me and I can always like partition off areas that I don't want the birds and wildlife to get to but this invites them in so that we can see them and they can be part of our ecosystem so I'm looking around the greenhouse and I'm fairly sure that these little weeds popping up everywhere are lamb's quarters. I'm going to come back later um, to double check, but I think so. And on the plant app, it came up with sage. I know that's not true, but one of them said possibly quinoa. And that's a relative if it is lamb qu lamb's quarters. But you can see how some of the true leaves are shaped. They're not fully the way that you normally see them, but they're babies. So I think these are lamb's quarters, which they are growing where I wanted the strawberries to grow. Um, but if they're lamb's quarters, I want them because they are delicious. Um, so we'll let them keep growing. We're going on a hunt, on a mealybug hunt. Let's see what we can find. There's one. There's one. And if all of these plants are like little beds. Then the Cuban oregano is like the Sealy Posturepedic because they love this plant. And they're really hard to remove without breaking it. See, there's mealybug. It looks soft like a little teddy bear, but it's about to die. <laughs> it suddenly got really dark just now. <laughs> Those guys are going bye-bye. They're going to be washed down the drain because I am giving this plant an actual shower. Yep. This is like the Sealy Posturepedic. They're like, oh, it's so soft and comfy here and it even smells like a breeze. Look at those. It's like a whole family. Look at that. Mealybugs. And I'm just going to squish them and rinse them down the sink. That's what you should do too. A little bit of soapy water works as well, but squish, 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 squish. They are so soft bodied. They're easy to get rid of, but they just want to keep popping back up. And this is their favorite plant now because it is soft. And they seem to have figured out that it's hard for me to get rid of them because I, when I touch it, the the leaves fall off, right? So they figured out that I've been very careful with this plant. <sighs> yep, yuck. Time for a shower. It's nice that the plant's hanging over the side. That way I can wash its hair <laughs> without getting it completely saturated in the soil. Just rinsing, rinsing, rinsing. This plant's going to camp on the sink until I'm satisfied that I've gotten rid of 
all or most of the daily bugs. Hey girl, I'll hold you here for you. There we go. Rinse it off. Rinse, lather, repeat. Be gone. These guys just suck the chlorophyll out of the leaves, which is very, very bad. Since we don't have predators inside that much anyway, um, we have to be the predator. But eating them is optional though. Yeah. I'm joking. Don't eat them. It's gross. Rinse, 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 rinse. Rinse, 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 rinse. They really touch themselves underneath the leaves. Even though there's a lot of them, they haven't done a lot of damage yet. So, I'm getting to them in time. Get rid of those mealy bugs. Just because your plant looks healthy doesn't mean it's not infested with something. So, make sure that you turn it over, look underneath, and also use a spray bottle. I'm going to put it on the more direct. That knocks them off really good. If I knock it off, it's going into the soil. So I'm going to have to keep doing this until I kill them. It's spring break, y'all. No one's here. Except for your crazy science teacher. My students are going to be so surprised when they come back from spring break. I just removed these acorns, these little baby oak trees, from the refrigerator. They've been cold stratifying for a long time now. And I can see, look, they're sprouting. Wow. They're going to be so excited. I flipped it over so you can see the back. Look. Look at the roots. Oh, wow. Fabulous. So what we did was I took a bunch of acorns and I gave all the kids sandpaper and they scratched it. They scorified it. We soaked them for a few days and then we wrapped them in damp paper towels and put them in the refrigerator. It's been about three, three plus months. And just before spring break, one of my students said, did we forget about them? <laughs> Look at this. Okay. Wow. They're going to be very, very happy. This is better than last time. Last time they were just splitting, but now you actually see roots. So this will be a project that they do when they come back from spring break. Exciting.